The experts all agree that going to a trade show is the best way to source products. But how do you choose which suppliers to talk to out of the thousands that are there? What questions should you ask them? And how do you make sure that they take you seriously? Today on Ecommerce Heroes, I'll be talking to Gary Huang about how to attend Asian trade shows like a pro. Gary is the founder of 8020 Sourcing and helps sellers source products more efficiently from China. This month's video sponsor is Wonderlister, an affordable eBay listing tool that makes a great replacement for Turbolister. So Gary, what's the benefit of attending a trade show versus researching products and manufacturers online? Well, that's a great question, um, Alex. I feel that um, there's one very interesting statistic that I'd like to um, bring up before we get into that. And it's the fact that multi-million dollar sellers are twice as likely to attend trade shows than non-multi-million dollar sellers. So I think that, you know, there's something uh, magical going on when, you know, people attend trade shows. I mean, it's not just a simple, just a matter of just showing up, but I think, you know, there's a lot of um, benefits to it in attending a trade show. The first thing is you get to see the product in person. So you can physically, you can pick up the product, you can touch, you can feel it, you can see if it's, you know, a good quality product and um, you can see it right away. And, you know, this is a lot faster than ordering samples from China. It could take a couple of weeks, you know, a lot of back and forth for it to arrive. So it can really save you a lot of time. It can fast track the sourcing process. Uh, not only that, when you visit a trade show, normally you can find many suppliers, you know, manufacturing similar things. So you can visit them in succession. So you can see right away, you know, how supplier A's product compared with supplier B's. And then you can learn a lot very quickly. Um, so I like that as well, you know, from the, the you know, the buyer's perspective. Uh, you can also spot new trends at trade shows because new products often, they hit trade shows before they're listed on, online on Alibaba. Um, so this way you can jump ahead of your competitors with, uh, with new products. And the third thing that I like about attending trade shows is you can build relationships. You can build relationships with your suppliers. Uh, you know, sometimes just looking someone face to face, you know, eye to eye and shaking hands, that builds a lot of rapport instantly that can take, you know, even months or years online to make. So um, I think that these are the, the key three uh, for attending trade shows, you know, being able to see the products in person quickly, uh, to spot new trends and also to build relationships. And you make some great points there, Gary. And, and I'll, I'll come back to some of the other things you said later in the interview. But the first thing I want to pick up on is that you said, you know, there are many exhibitors at these shows. So how can sellers go about deciding which suppliers they should be visiting at these exhibitions? Right. So trade shows in um, Canton Fair, especially, can be huge. And then you can literally spend days and not weeks, you know, wandering the exhibition halls. Um, but before we talk about Canton Fair, um, I suggest that, you know, going to a trade show isn't just, you know, there's more to trade shows than just Canton Fair. Um, you know, I think that people should pick their trade shows wisely because Canton Fair, while it's very broad, you know, they have like a really wide scope of product. They don't necessarily go as in depth in a particular category. So for example, if you're selling uh, electronics um, and um, Canton Fair may or may not be the best fit for electronics. There are certain other trade shows that directly target these niches. For example, uh, Global Sources in Hong Kong, for example, they have trade shows uh, specializing in electronics. And a lot of the suppliers there have been vetted. And, um, you know, they go really deep in terms of different types of suppliers that offer different um, you know, product quality as well. So, you know, pick your trade shows wisely. If you do go to, you know, a, a general trade fair like Canton Fair, just be prepared for a lot of walking. I would uh, check the website first and the showgrounds map to get a lay of the land. So, you know, certain exhibition halls may f feature certain products. So I like to, you know, be targeted as to, you know, my plan of attack. So, for example, if I'm looking for a coffee grinder, I know I want to look in the kitchen appliance section. 
I'm going to stay away from bathroom, for example, right? If I'm going to look for luggage and travel, I'm going to hit those areas first. So I'll look at the map and then I'll target those specific areas first. And then this way I'll find clusters of suppliers more likely to offer the product that I want. Um, not only that, with Canton Fair, there's different phases of the fair. There's uh, three phases. So, um, you know, if you're selling consumer, good, consumer goods, make sure you go to phase two. If you pick the wrong phase, then the suppliers won't be there, right? So these are, you know, some general ways that you can save time when you visit these uh, really vast trade shows. And when you're, when you've identified, like you've said, you want a coffee grinder, so you're going to go to the sort of um, kitchen shows. Are there anything to look out for on the stands that could be a warning sign that there could be something a bit dodgy about that supplier? Right. Um, first off, you know, I, I stay away from stands that are empty and, you know, people don't look motivated to work. Um, you know, I like to find people that are as passionate about doing business as I am. Um, another thing is I like to look at uh, busy stands. If I see like a crowd of people gathered around, you know, I'm just kind of curious, you know, maybe I just stand back a little bit. I observe what's going on, you know, why are they so popular? And maybe this is going to be the next hot product, right? And um, on the other hand, I also, um, you know, in terms of warning signs, I prefer to work with direct factories uh, rather than trading companies. I mean, I don't mean to say all trading companies are bad or evil. But if you do find a factory that offers good service, good quality, you typically are going to get a better price by going factory direct and cutting out the middleman. And in cases, you know, something goes wrong, like you don't, you're not sure whose side the, the middleman will be on, right? So like how to tell a, a trading company from a factory at a trade show, one telltale sign is of a trading company is that they typically carry everything under the sun. So they may have uh, fidget spinners, they may have uh, inflatable beach beds, selfie sticks, and then the, the latest fads, you know. So because if you think about it logically, there probably isn't one factory that can make, you know, everything under the sun, right? So I, I you know, I call it the, the common thread test. So when I look at the, the stand, um, factories typically have like a common thread going through all of their products. So for example, the material of the products might be silicone. So everything that they offer has silicone in it. So it could be silicone baking sheets, uh, silicone spatula, silicone measuring cups. So it kind of makes sense because all of their raw materials and their equipment is configured to use this material to make their products. Um, so that, that's typically um, a telltale sign of a factory when you look at their booth. And uh, another question that I like to ask is, can I visit your factory? Um, because normally factories, they're totally okay with you visiting because you're, that's the next step in uh, doing business together. But if they suddenly get nervous or you know, they're making some excuses, that's usually a sign they're trying to hide something or they may be a middleman because they don't necessarily want to reveal the factory to you. And you've obviously been to a lot of trade shows in, in your time, Gary. Um, so what are some common mistakes that you see sellers making at shows and how can they go about avoiding doing exactly the same thing? Right. So the, probably the top two mistakes that I see a lot of rookies and new sellers make is one, uh, they focus just on the cheapest price. Um, this can be dangerous because you get what you pay for and a cheap price means cheap quality and then it can come back and bite you later in the form of uh, negative customer reviews. So instead, I suggest that they look for the right supplier uh, that offers the right product at the right quality. And I, would, um, I wouldn't just ask, you know, what's the price first? You know, I would visit several suppliers uh, making the product that they want. I try to learn about the details and specifications of the product. Uh, for example, you know, ask what type of uh, stainless steel the coffee grinder is made of. So a reputable supplier will use uh, like 306 grade stainless steel, which is food grade, right? And then, you know, once you, you're, you know, you're armed with this piece of information in your mind, then when you talk to the second supplier, you ask, oh, like, do you offer 306 grade stainless steel? So this makes you sound more professional and, you know, versus, oh, what, what's your price? What's your FOB? You know, so, um, so you, you're, you're learning as you're visiting these suppliers. The second um, 
Second mistake that I see a lot of newbies make is they focus only on MOQ or the minimum order quantity. Um, this is a total rookie move because it says that you're small, right? So instead, you should come in before the show with a plan. Um, you know, I would, if I have a, a, a product in mind, like let's take the coffee grinder, right? I would use uh, market research tools like Jungle Scouts. And then I'll, you know, run the numbers and then I'll, um, you know, do my best guesstimate, um, you know, how many sales I can generate per month, right? So for example, if I uh, forecast 300 sales per month, I'll, you know, forecast that times 12 for an annual forecast. So that's between roughly 3,000 or 4,000 units per year. So when I approach the supplier, I would use that figure first rather than MOQ. So I would say um, we're a US-based, uh, kitchen-based, uh, you know, kitchen uh, online retailer. Uh, we're expanding into coffee grinders and we have an annual purchase volume of about three or 4,000 units per year. But that will be after we review samples and a trial order of 500 units. And then, you know, we could talk more about pricing. Um, so this way, you know, you seem more like a professional buyer versus someone that's just like looky loose and asking for the lowest price and uh, MOQs because the the suppliers, you know, just as you're judging the suppliers, they're also judging you, the buyer. So like you, you don't want to make these type of uh, rookie mistakes. And you mentioned there being seen as a professional buyer and the fact that suppliers are judging you. So what else should sellers be asking to make sure that they are taken seriously by the suppliers at the exhibitions? Right. Uh, depending on the product, I also like to ask about certifications. Uh, this is especially important if you're dealing with uh, food related products or electronics, um, you know, just to see if this supplier they have, um, you know, the qualifications and the certifications to be able to, uh, you know, meet your country's standards. Because if not, then you can get into a lot of trouble with, you know, product recalls or even, you know, getting stuck at customs. Um, so that's another question that is um, a good question to ask. Other than that, um, there's another test that I call the the country test. So I like to ask the suppliers which countries they mainly export to. And then I listen to what they say. Um, if they say, uh, you know, the US or uh, UK, that's, and if I'm selling to these markets, that's normally a good sign. Or if, uh, you know, they've sold to Walmart or like a Target or a big box retailer because they've, they have very strict regulations and inspections with the factory audits, et cetera, and they passed, that's usually a good sign. Um, on the other hand, if they export mainly to, uh, Africa or Middle Eastern countries, um, it may be a different quality standard than, you know, for North America and, and Western Europe. So I, I would be careful. Uh, but, th but these are intelligent questions to ask that will, you know, make you look professional when you visit a trade show. Okay, Gary. So bringing this all together, my final question for you is what are your top three e-commerce heroes tips for making the most of attending a trade show in Asia? Okay. Um, my top three tips. Okay. Probably number one is, you know, everybody talks about Canton fair, but you know, there's, there's a lot more to trade shows than just that. I am, I mean, I wish that, you know, people would kind of expand upon that. Um, you know, even in their own backyard, like if you're in the U S there's trade shows happening all year long in Las Vegas and New York city and Florida. And some of these trade shows, they have Chinese suppliers that fly all the way out there. So, I mean, the ones that go there, they got some skin in the game. I feel like they're pretty committed to, you know, being serious about doing business. So, you know, don't just limit yourself to Canton fair. Um, probably the second tip is if you are going to China and if you have time, try to visit a couple of factories because this really will give you a behind the scenes look, you know, how the sausage gets made. Uh, for example, you can see, uh, the, you know, the equipment, the materials, the workers, whether they're in, you know, sort of working conditions that you're comfortable with because they may or they may not be. You know, that's another factor that, you know, that's part of your business. And I think that, you know, doing, uh, you know, ethical business and social responsibility, that, that's very important as well. 
Um, also, when you visit a factory, you know, just the fact that you showed up, you flew halfway around the world, that says a lot in terms of building a relationship or in, in Chinese, um, you know, we call this guan xi. So th this will kind of, you know, separate yourself from the other uh, customers, the other factory customers, because you can sit down with the boss, you may have a meal with them, you know, get to know a little bit about them and their family. Uh, so you're a real person. You're not just like someone, you know, behind an email address. And um, so I think that these would be uh, my top tips. And then um, I've actually prepared a one page uh, guide or cheat sheet, if you will, for attending trade shows for our audience on um, web retailer. And um, if they'd like, they can feel free to visit um, our website, www.8020sourcing.com slash e-commerce heroes. And, um, you know, maybe Alex can include that URL um, in the, you know, in the show notes for our viewers if they're interested. So just this way, it's a one page sheet sheet that you can use to uh, attend a trade show like a pro. So to make the most out of your time. Well, Gary, thank you very much for joining me. And we will put a link to the cheat sheet that Gary mentioned there in the description for this video. I'd like to say thank you as well to this month's video sponsor, Wonderlister, an eBay listing tool that makes a great replacement for TurboLister. My final thank you is to everyone at home for watching, and we'll see you again for another episode of eCommerce Heroes here at Web Retailer. Goodbye.